Ernestine L. Rose was a pioneer and activist and a woman ahead of her time. On October the 19th, 1851, she delivered a speech on women's rights. And from the historic transcript, I have chosen the following individual excerpts. On marriage. At marriage, she loses her entire identity. Her being is said to be merged in her husband. Has nature there merged it? Has she ceased to exist or feel pleasure and pain? When she violates the laws of her being, does he pay the penalty? When she breaks the laws of the land, does he suffer the punishment? When his wants are supplied, is it sufficient to satisfy the wants of her nature? But it will be said that the husband provides for the wife, or in other words, he is bound to feed, clothe and shelter her. Oh, the degradation of that idea. Yes, he keeps her, so he does his horse. By law, both are considered his property. Both can, when the cruelty of the owner compels them to run away, be brought back by the strong arm of the law. And according to a still accent law of England, both may be led by the halter to the marketplace and sold. On education. But for what purpose is the girl educated? Do parents ever direct the education of a daughter for any such purposes? Oh no. The rich man's daughter is taught to dance, to play on the piano, to draw and paint, which she sometimes practices on her own face, to speak a little bad French, etc, etc. Not for the intrinsic value and beauty of these accomplishments, but to attract and ultimately catch a bow and get married. For no sooner is she married than these things are all laid aside as some idle things to be thought of no more. How many ladies past the age of 50 use these accomplishments from a pure love of them and the gratification of the family around them? Among the new musical nations of Europe you may find some, but here these accomplishments are acquired as a means to an end that end, once obtained, there is no further use for them. The working classes educate their daughters in accordance with what would now be required of them, namely, to cook a dinner good enough for a poor man, darn his stockings, sew on buttons, etc. Now these things are very good in themselves, every girl ought to know them, and know them well, Yet it is not enough for a healthy, happy, rational, intellectual life. But then it is all man now requires of a woman. When he will look for higher and nobler mental accomplishments and powers, she will possess them. Times have changed and we have made progress. Unfortunately, there are a lot of inherent attitudes and cultural influences that continue to oppress and deny the rights of a woman to be treated as equal.